Hello and welcome to the part 3 of sci-fi patterns. Um, so this time I want to start with cube 3D node. Okay, so I'm going to run it through tile sampler. Plug this into the pattern input one, double click on the node and change the pattern to read from uh, an input. I'm going to reduce the amount to maybe six and six for now. And I'm just going to play with the scale, scale random, and just, you know, trying a little bit different uh, values here. And then scale just to you know, fill this whole uh, view with the, with the cubes. And I'm going to position random as well, and maybe offset to 0.5. And I'm going to reduce uh, this size random. And maybe leave that one maybe at 0.5 and scale this up just a little bit just to make sure that you know we won't get any uh, black values in this node and now I want to run it through edge detect node and as you can see we're kind of getting some abstract shapes I kind of consider them to be a little bit sci-fi because they kind of angular and I don't know we'll see how it goes later on okay Okay, so we got this and now I'm gonna do actually I'm gonna select the tile sampler while having uh, this in the preview and I'm gonna start reducing the Y amount Okay, and we kind of end up with something like this maybe So now I'm just gonna try different values here and there just to see what I could get out of this node. Okay, so I kind of like this. It kind of gives me this uh, um, angular shapes. And I quite like the, the, the simple design of this. So I'm just gonna run it through another edge detect node. As you can see, we're kind of getting even better shapes now. I'm just going to invert it to see what we could get. Okay, so I kind of got outlines and I just want to roll with the outlines like this. And now we can do the trick that we did in the previous video. So I'm just going to copy paste that node and reduce its uh, value basically to zero on the uh, edge width. I run this one again through the edge width and we're gonna get the uh, double edges. But now I have to go back to this one and actually increase this just a little bit, okay? Okay, cool, so now we could do two things. Um, we could blend it with this one and our alpha, let it be, oh, do you know what, let's maybe try a different one, because we usually try Perlin noise, but I want to try maybe polygon, so I could get um, even more angular shapes. So I'm going to run it through tile sampler, and plug it into input one, change it to pattern input, I'm going to try six and six, and random position, maybe offset, 0.3 and I'm just gonna start increasing the scale and changing the uh, random values I wanna do the rotation random as well and now go back to scale and basically this and this will be our alpha and now we can go back to the tire sampler so we can uh, have a little bit more control over this and we can either control the, the scale of or we can go up basically and change the amount maybe let's double it and then go back to the scale I 
and now for example if you think uh, if you think those edges are actually too thick you can actually you know manipulate your edge width just a tiny little bit to uh, get a little bit better design so to me this map seems a little bit too busy so i'm just going to go back to the edge and detect um, the first one and you could either you know increase this one change the roundness if you want to more pieces to be there or maybe increase it to make those uh, designs a little bit even uh, rounded i'm gonna stick with this i'm gonna uh, blur it now just a little bit because we are getting very uh, jagged edges like this one so i'm gonna go with maybe uh, maybe 0.4 Okay, so it smooths um, some of the edges. Okay, now we can um, either blur it a little bit and add some colors to it, but um, I want to show you another things that I uh, discovered, which is the bevel node. And with the bevel node, you can basically uh, decrease the distance a little bit, and you got this uh, nice pattern. Um, I usually run it through auto levels at the end, uh, just to you know bring those values back a little bit okay if you yeah, if you'd like to control yourself the uh, the levels then you could go back to the uh, bevel node get something like this for example and let's say you want those edges to be uh, brighter then you just need to bring the levels node and just adjust it yourself basically okay the next thing will be probably to blur it just a little bit so you can get rid of any um, jagged edges and you could end up with something like this actually let me run it maybe through edge detect to see what we're gonna get yeah so we get a little bit more uh, thicker edges and what you could do now is just uh, blend those two and use your uh, polygon tall sampler map as an alpha okay it doesn't seem like it's working so maybe nope okay let's find out why i'm gonna copy and paste tell down the opacity okay still not sure what's going on there Try the size. Oh, okay. So it was basically uh, too big. And now in the edge detect node, it seems like we cannot lower it any further because I'd like those to be a little bit more thinner. Mm, let's try maybe scan histogram scan and see if that gives us what we want. Yeah, quite possibly. Okay. Yeah, so we're kind of um, getting this kind of design and now we can control uh, through the position. So again, very abstract shapes, but hopefully uh, it gives you some ideas how to basically achieve those kind of patterns. And hopefully you're going to end up with more than one. As you can see, we just went through a couple of those and kind of getting very interesting results in my opinion. But, you know, let's keep going. Let's maybe add a directional uh, blur. And I actually want it to be upward direction, so 90 degree. And I'm gonna blend it. And I want another blur, just a, an, a regular one. Not that much, just a little bit. And now let's try to blend it with the add. Okay, 
So it seems like we are getting somewhere and then another blend with the normal blur on add as well. And now the gradient map and we could start adding some colors. So I'm just gonna add maybe blue. Just to show you, you know, what you could get essentially. It seems like our main texture is a little bit too sharp, so before I will blend it with any other textures. Now with this one, I just want to run it through the, the blur node, okay? With maybe low intensity, something like 0.5. Okay, so this is the first example and now maybe let's try um, a little bit different example because I actually want to show you one additional node that I found that might be useful um, to creating those kind of um, abstract patterns, okay? Um, so I'm going to start with cube again, cube 3D, uh, tile sampler, uh, plug it into input. I want to try maybe six and six again, but this time maybe I want to reduce this size basically. Uh, but maybe let's try first add some uh, random uh, values to it. So maybe 0.5 and scale random and scale. Let's start with 2.5, position random to the max, and 0.5 on offset. Uh, actually, I don't want to tweak any rotation on it, okay? So now I want to go back actually here and tweak this size and increase the, the randomness of it and a little bit on the uh, y-axis as well. And now I want to actually play with the scale. Also, I want to go back and actually reduce the amount. Uh, I want to reduce the amount on the y by 5 maybe. Sorry, 2.5 and that one maybe two let's keep it three now i actually want to try to create a bit more black space in the texture so i'm gonna keep modifying the uh, scale of it a little bit maybe and decreasing the size on the x so we end up maybe with something like this mm. Okay, I want to get rid of the uh, random on the y-axis, but a little bit increase on the x. So we got this. Okay, let's try, let's try now run it through the edge detect. As you can see, we're kind of getting some interesting shapes. At least I think. I'm going to uh, keep roundness, but on low value, like 2 maybe. And increase this to... Uh, to something like this maybe okay and now the same thing so edge detect again to get the uh, double edge mm. I'm gonna go back and copy paste our uh, uh, hexagonal tile sampler to use as a mask and I'm going to do the same thing, so I'm going to blend it. This and this, that will be our alpha. And now I can go back and actually increase the alpha. I'm sorry, increase the, the hexagonal shapes in the tile sampler. Because I want just a little bit, okay? And now we can modify those and see what we could get out of it. Okay, so we get something like this, um, but I don't like this uh, pattern being uh, mixed here, so I'm just going to run another edge detect here on the low values, just lines maybe, to see what we could get. Okay, and now we could uh, maybe increase it just a little bit, like this. 
cool if you want some gradient basically try to let's try maybe run it through bevel node let's see if we could get a little bit gradient in our uh, alpha Um, now maybe histogram scan. Okay, so as you can see, it's not very, it's not hard edged. It's got this uh, a little bit smooth transition. I'm not sure if that's what you want, but you know, in case you do, uh, there, that's an option. So I'm just gonna go back to our hard um, endings. And now I want to displace it just a bit. So I'm going to use a vector uh, morph grayscale and I need vector field here. So I'm just going to use cell one, decrease the scale of it and run it through normal map and plug it in. As you can see, we're getting very nice displacement here. I think it only um, adds details to our uh, sci-fi lines. Okay. Um, so yeah, I think that this vector morph grayscale and you know those kind of shapes that was a key point. And now I'm just gonna go and maybe try to add some colors to it. So um, I'm gonna add direction blur. I want it to be pointing upward, so that'll be 90 degrees. I'm going to get the regular blur. I'm going to mix those two together. And I'm going to mix our original texture as well. So this needs to be set to add and this one's set to add as well. I need to change the order so I can control the the blur and now if I go back to this node basically I have the slider for the uh, for the blur uh, blur lines okay it depends how much you actually want them and how many okay and now it's just standard gradient map just to get some basic colors I'm gonna go for this red-ish color this time Okay, now we can go back here and basically increase the blur line, so decrease it. And of course you can run it through blur a little bit to get rid of any hard edged lines that you might get. Uh, just to, um, bear in mind it needs to be on the low intensity, otherwise you're just going to lose the, uh, the sharpness and it gets too blurry. It's not what you want. Mm, so I think this is uh, a bit more balanced. And obviously, you know, you've got a bunch of settings to tweak now. You can go to your directional and blur, change the direction, and get a uh, just a little bit different results. Okay. All right, so I hope you found this useful. And hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully see you in the next one. Thanks.